The big game is fast approaching, but wait, you still haven't got your tickets. You've spent hours searching, but you're still confused about ticket prices. Time to stop searching. Visit TicketCompare.com. We compare ticket prices for all the popular leagues and tournaments for you. We work only with the most trustworthy sites, so you can have peace of mind when buying your tickets. Compare prices, buy tickets, get to the game. TicketCompare.com. Buying tickets made simple. Afternoon. The uh, squad you named has a very fresh, futuristic look almost. Was that the idea? Um, well, I've got a training camp at the moment just for um, a selection of players, lads who went to China, but also a lot of the lads from the 21 squad. So uh, Robert Page is with us as well. And really, it was just the incentive for a group of players to get onto that LA trip. So I've said that to them. Um, this is a chance for you to to shine, um, to show us what you've got. Um, obviously, they're, they're all not going to, not all of them are going to go, but it give um, the young lads that chance to get on that trip and be part of the game against Mexico. So um, I was always keen from when I started to have that pathway through that uh, communication with Robert Page, with Paul Bowden, with Rob Edwards, all the managers who look after the younger teams um, and giving them a chance um, because that's what, you know, I got brought up with and that's what I believe in. Can you just confirm who wasn't available, whether we've got matches still this season or, or injuries? Um, yeah, Joe Allen has picked up an injury. Um, he'd had some trouble with his toe. He was uh, playing through um, injections the last month or so and then he got a kick on it in the last game after I think after eight minutes so Joe's out unfortunately through injury and then of course you've got the lads who are involved in games um, the Liverpool lads obviously Gareth um, and Neil Taylor now um, with, with the playoffs so um, yeah obviously it's two game two days before our game so um, it's very unlikely that they'll be involved for these seven guys who come through from the under 21s. Um, is this the way do you think international football is going now that you may get opportunities even before you had major opportunity at club level? Um, yeah, potentially. Um, I think it always helps that um, I've seen it with um, Harry Wilson that you need games, you know, the difference in him since he went to Hull and playing in in regular games and having that rhythm is um, and when he come to us he was he was he was brilliant and that's because he'd been playing games regular so yeah sometimes it gives you the chance um, to play games to get your fitness if you're not playing for your clubs um, and yeah ideally you want everyone playing you know when you meet up um, for the international camps you want everyone in that match rhythm like I say because it's much easier to play um, so yeah it's a long way to go for a friendly. Um, what are the benefits you're hoping to get from this? I think the example of uh, the China tour, I had one and a half um, training sessions before the first game. I didn't want that uh, for my next camp. I wanted five or six good quality training days before the game. So I've got that. I wanted a good climate, uh, recognising that um, it's the end of the season. You know, the lads are looking to get on holiday, perhaps. Um, I wanted it to be in a, obviously, a decent place, decent environment, and then a good game at the end. And we've got all them things. You know, I, I've been out to LA pre-season plenty enough. The facilities are great. You work in the morning, afternoon, you're free, you know, to relax. Um, but at the end of it, a really tough game against a very good team who obviously go into the World Cup. You've got players in this squad from both uh, Cardiff City and Swansea. From your perspective, can you just outline the benefits, the advantages of Cardiff getting promoted and, and Swansea obviously the disadvantages of them coming? Yeah, obviously delighted that Cardiff uh, have gone up. Um, you know, it's great for, for obviously Cardiff, for Welsh football, um, for the players who I can pick. Um, it can only benefit from playing in the Premier League, playing week in, week out. And of course, you've got the flip side of Swansea, the disappointment of going down. But um, I'm sure they'll bounce back. Um, they're a brilliant club. They've been um, regulars in the Premier League for a number of years now. They've got a setback and, you know, they've got a chance now to, to get back at the first time of asking, of course. 
Um, so yeah, I mean, ideally, as as Welsh manager, you want both clubs in the Premier League because it's fantastic for Welsh football. You mentioned about the Champions League final and, and no Gareth Bale. Um, do you think he's going to come back a winner again from that uh, weekend next week? I shouldn't say this, but yeah, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> no, obviously for Gareth to win it four times, um, forgetting about Liverpool aspect, but to, there's a lot of Liverpool supporters in there, isn't there? Um, but no, I, I think, yeah, so next to one. Um, does ever, everyone knows that, don't they? I do. They do know. They do know, yeah. Um, I think, no, for Gareth personally, um, to win it four times is... Will be will be magnificent. Um, it'll be an un- unbelievable achievement. But it's a, it's a fantastic game. Two clubs who have got brilliant history, of course, in the European Cup, Champions League, and it's a fascinating game. Um, you know, a lot of quality on the pitch, especially in forward areas. So yeah, um, I'm looking forward to, to to watching the game and um, seeing how see who comes out on top. Still a lot of speculation about his future from where you sit. How do you do well, he's at a fantastic club. Um, and, you know, I've just mentioned the amount of times that he could potentially win the Champions League. Um, but obviously as a player, uh, you, you want to play regular. So, yeah, I know Gareth has, has loved playing at Madrid. Um, like I say, you don't get many better clubs than Real Madrid. And as a player, you want to win things. So, um yeah, of course, it's Gareth's decision. He wants to play, um, but now he's happy. And just slightly uh, wider afield, um, do you think international management maybe is becoming more attractive to, to managers who've finished playing and perhaps looking to get in, uh, players who finish coming to the end of their career because of what's happening to Premier League managers looking today? Two, two Premier League managers lost their jobs <coughs> in a few days at the end of the season. In comparison, where you sit, does it seem a safer, more secure option? Um, yeah, I mean, that's just the climate that we're in at the moment. You know, managers um, not being in jobs very long. And especially for your first job, you, you know, you want time. You want time to learn about yourself as a coach. Um, international football, usually you, you get more that, that time, you know at least a couple of years. And um, at the moment in club football, you're not getting that. You know, I don't know what the stats are, but it was nine months. It could be down, even down to six months now. And when teams decide to, to change midway through the season or just at the start of the season, they're going to go with experience because they're going to go with, with managers who have done it and, and seen it. So it gets harder and harder for a young coach um, but you look at the likes of Steven Gerrard, who's got a fantastic job. I think, you know, as a young coach, I want him to do well because that could open the gates for um, players who, who have played, who have, who have had great careers, um, to go into, into fantastic jobs like that. Just lastly from me, uh, Ryan, forgive me if you answer this up in, uh, in Wrexham. Um, we've had a positive update on Sir Alex Ferguson over the last few days. What was your reaction to hearing that encouraging update. Yeah, um, obviously it's fantastic that um, he is making that recovery. I think it's going to be slow. Um, so I think uh, one of Sir Alex's <laughs> weaknesses was was patience, but he's going to have to be patient. But I've said before he's a fighter, and um, you know after the the news that we heard that he'd he'd fell ill, um, it's encouraging every day. So um, yeah. Just like I've said before, you know, I, I wish him for a speedy recovery and um, looking forward to seeing him, seeing him again. Thanks, Ryan. Ryan, okay. Gareth, but you do have Aaron Ramsey, who you didn't have in China. Yeah. So how important do you see his role now and in the future? Yeah, of course, because he's a top player. So, um, and he's had a fantastic season. Uh, and um, he's that quality that you need as a manager. You know, you... You want as much quality on the pitch as you uh, as you can get, and not only in the games but in training as well. You know, for young players coming through to see the likes of, of Aaron, um, you know, performing every day and seeing what it takes to become a top player, 
um, it can only be beneficial for them players as well. You got to word with Gary Neville to stop digging him out sometimes? Mm, no. <laughs> um, you, the senior players that, who, are, who are missing, will that put more pressure on the senior players who are there? Because there is, as Graham said, a very fresh look to this squad. Um, I think there's always pressure on all the players when they come away. Um, you know, but that's the pressure that you want. You want pressure as a footballer. Um, you want to be able to perform under that under that pressure and that under that spotlight. But on the flip side, it gives a great chance for for players um, to make a, make a claim and I, to stake a claim. And that's what I've seen in China: players given a chance and taking it. Um, some fantastic performances. Uh, some debuts and I was really pleased with that and that's what I wanted I want um, the older more experienced players the established players to be looking over their shoulder to be looking down and seeing a younger player uh, biting at their ankles wanting their place and not only wanting their place but staying in their place because that can only be good for, for, the, for the squad Ethan Abdu has had his injury problems can you give it to Sorry? Ethan Abdu has had yeah. his injury problems that on where you see him now? Um, yeah, he was off his crutches a couple of weeks ago. So, yeah, he's now got the summer to get ready. Um, he's going to be fit for pre-season, so that's fantastic news. And um, the good thing is, you know, he's a, he's a young player, um, plenty of time to recover, a fantastic prospect. Can't wait to work with him. Um, but also, you know, you've got to give him time as well. You know, it, it was a big injury, um, but... He'll come back and um, looking forward to working with him because he has a talent. And just uh, on the last few days, uh, Cardiff City Stadium, your home now for the forthcoming Nations League and Euro 2020 qualifiers. Back to where the players feel most at home, would you say? Well, the, we've got a fantastic record there. Um, and we're lucky in the fact that we've got fantastic f facilities to choose from. Um, so, yeah, um, at the moment we're at Cardiff. Um, we always look at each game um, as it comes and um, decide on where we're going to play and what the best thing to do is for, first and foremost, getting the result, but also the fans getting to see um, the team play. And with that, in, in respect of that, Spain is going to be at the Prince Valley Stadium. How excited are you about that? Very excited because um, you know tickets for the games at Cardiff sell out very very quickly. It's not perhaps like when I played, where now we have a real strong team of staff um, that do a great job of selling the tickets, of getting out there, the PR, um, making sure that we do sell out um, stadiums, and it gives a chance for fans that potentially don't get to them games to see a fantastic game, you know, against a, what has been the top side over the last 10, 15 years. OK, any more questions? Yep, Lawrence. Uh, just a couple of quick ones. Uh, George Williams, uh, back in the squad, he's had his, some real injury problems. Where's he at at the moment? Have you been interested in what he's been doing uh, at St. Johnston? Um, yeah, I, I think um, all the players... Um, you want to see them fit. Um, at the, I've got a real mix at the moment where um, Jazz has joined us. He's had a terrible season regarding um, injuries. He's fit towards the end um, and he's probably been frustrated. Um, but yeah, you want players turning up fit because that's when they can perform at their best. So... Um, We've had a lot of injuries as well. I'm quickly finding out that's the frustration about international football. You know, you, you come to meet up and the weekend before, um, you're dreading that phone call off, off the physio and the medical department. Um, but yeah, also, you know, you want to look after the players when they do come, um, making sure that you're getting the best out of them. Uh, a couple of the yoga players, uh, Chris Neppel and um, uh, Brooks, I think Brooks, obviously they've had a very good season, a lot of interest in the Premier League season. Big summers for them. You expect them to carry on being championship players, or any advice for them stepping up? Yeah, I mean Brooks has obviously had glandular fever, um, so he ended the season well again. Um, but that is a big illness. So again, that's someone who we need to look after, making sure that um, 
he can perform at his best ability. And Chris has uh, just come from nowhere, really. He's just been fantastic this season. He was fantastic in China. Um, he's got a fantastic future. So, um, yeah, these are the players that I want to um, make it competitive. You know, I'm, I'm, like I just said, push the more established players. Um, so they're constantly looking over their shoulder. Okay, right. Thank you. We'll do about 20 minutes for the written press next door. Okay.